If we come to the lightweight uh, division, British lightweight boxing title history, um, and yeah, long standing division, the lightweight division, 135 pounds on nine stone nine pounds, um, just over the nine and a half stone limit. So we start off in 1884, December, December the 20th, 1884, Jim Carney wins by KO in the 45th round against Jake Hayams in London. And in 1891, uh, May the 25th, 1981, 1881, should I say, Dick Berg wins by disqualification against Jim Carney in London, England. And then June the 27th, 1882, Dick Berg. Dick Berg or Burge, yeah, it is Burge or Berg, wins by KO in the second round against Jackie Thompson in London, England. In 1894, May 4th, not 1884, Dick Berg or Burge wins by KO in the 28th round against Harry Nichols in London, England. Then May the 31st, 1897, Tom Causer wins by retirement in the seventh round against Dick Berg or Burge. In London, England, and in October the 8th. October the 8th, 1897. Dick Berg, Dick Burge, wins by KO in the first round against Tom Causer in London, England. And in April the 25th, 1898. Johnny Hughes wins on points over 20 rounds against Jim Curran in London, England. Then November the 20th, 1899. Javez White wins by a KO in the eighth round against Harry Greenfield in London, England. Then December the 23rd, 1901. Javez White draws over 20 rounds against Jim Curran in Birmingham. Then April the 21st, 1902, Jabez White wins by KO in the sixth round against Bill Chester in London, England. Then we got April the 23rd, 1906. 1906. April 23rd, 19, um, 18, 1906, shall I say. Jack Gold. Swain wins on points over 20 rounds against Jabez White from London uh, in London, England. And then we've got 1907. Uh, same year as Tommy Burns beat Bill Squires in Colma, California. He fought him a couple of times. Uh, on July the 4th, 1907, he fought him on the world scene, in the world heavyweight scene. But we're back to the British lightweight scene here, 1907. So February 11th, 1907, Jack Goldswain wins by KO in the fifth round against Pat Daly in London, England. Then, same year, 1908, that Jack Johnson beats Tommy Burns in the heavyweight title. Right at the end of the year, Boxing Day, the end of the year, 26th, he beats him in Melbourne, Australia, chasing him around the world. But he never come back to Britain where he's meant to defend his title against um, another coloured fighter called... Sam Langford, and that's been, yeah, it's def definitely the uh, sporting club, British sporting club, funded Jack Johnson in his trip around the world to chase Tommy Burns, and when he got his shot, that was the agreement, he comes back and fight Sam Langford. Sam Langford had to fight for the coloured title, uh, heavyweight title, five times and win it. Um, he was a guy who started a featherweight and went up to knock out uh, heavyweights. Jack Johnson did fight Langford before he got his title, but he, yeah, he avoided him right there. But anyway, I don't want to be controversial. Lots will disagree. So, November 23rd, 1908. Johnny Summers wins in the 14th round. Referee stops the fight against Jack Goldswain in London, England. And then, uh, 
19, uh, yeah, November the 8th, 1909. Freddie Welsh. Now, he was the first guy to fight for a European title um, ever. But uh, Freddie Welsh here in the British scene wins on points over 20 rounds against Johnny Summers in London, England. And he probably was the first vegetarian uh, boxer or known. He's quite sort of um, beyond his times. He was a vegetarian, yeah, apparently a vegetarian in, all the way back then. Freddie Welsh, cracking fighter. Freddie Welsh. Come from a very uh, well-to-do family, actually, but he went against that and then, yeah, chased his dreams to the USA and pretty much lived like a hobo, basically, chasing his dreams of boxing, then come back and, uh, yeah, come back to Wells. So, I digress. We go to... 1911, so February the 27th, 1911, Matt Wells wins on points over 20 rounds against Freddie Welsh in London, England. <clears throat> then we got uh, 1912, now this is the same year that Ad Walgast fought Mexican Joe Rivers. It was a right, yeah, a hard fight and uh, a guy called Jack Welsh, nothing to do with Freddie Welsh here, uh, pulled pulled his own fighter off the other one. They both, it was basically like a double knockdown, like in Rocky uh, with Creed and that. And he pulled his own fighter up off the top of the other fighter. They're both on the floor. And who was uh, uh, Walgast and carried on counting over Mex and Joe Rivers. There's a lot of controversy there. Um, I think he might have been a mate, I'm not too sure. But anyway, I'm digressing. So, November 11th, 1912. Freddie Welsh wins on points over 20 rounds against Matt Wells in London, England. Then, 1919, the same year that Jack Dempsey beat Jess Willard. Um, yeah, re retired him in the third round. Yeah, and... Um, the big giant he beat then, um, and that was on July the 4th, 1919. Jack Dempsey, very raw Jack Dempsey there, um, but he did the business, putting him down seven times in the first round. And so we go here to the British scene. June the 23rd, 1919, Bob Marriott wins by disqualification in the 10th round against Johnny Summers in London, England. Then April 11th. 1921. Ernie Rice wins by KO in the seventh round against Ben Calicott in London, England. Then we go to September the 18th, 1922. Seamus James Hall wins on points over 20 rounds. Over Ernie Rice in Liverpool, England. Then we've got 1923, 1923, this same year we've got on subject of Jack Dempsey, he fought uh, Tommy Gibbons, there was the Gibbons brothers, and a uh, good fighter Gibbons, he, yeah, he only lost a few, he was um, a really good fighter, many fights he had, but they, uh, yeah, Shelby Montana, and they literally left, when they left the town, um, it, they left the, left the town derelict, money-wise. They lost so much money on it, the town. And, uh, yeah, there was sort of, sort of yeah, makeshift stuff put up for the ring, etc. And it literally made the town bankrupt. But anyway, that was 1923. But here on the British scene, June the 2nd, 1923. Seamus James Hall wins on points over 20 rounds against Hamilton Johnny Brown in Edinburgh. Scotland, and in May the 17th, 1923, Harry Mason wins by disqualification in the 13th round against Seamus James Hall in London, England. And then, November the 21st, 1923, Harry Mason wins on points over 20 rounds against Ernie Rice in London, England. Now, 1924, 1924, um, the year of the second Paris Olympics, the second Paris Olympics, 
the other one bid in 1900 but again 1924 we are here so November 24th 1924 Ernie Izzard wins on points over 20 rounds against Jack Kirk in London England then April 27th 1925 Ernie Izzard wins on points over wins on points over 20 rounds against Teddy Baker in London England June 22nd 1925 Harry Mason wins in the ninth round referee stops the fight against Ernie Izzard in London England and then February 11th 1926 same year Harry Greb died and Dempsey lost his first fight to Gene Tunney I'm sure that was yeah I know, I know 27 was the battle of long count when he got beaten the second time I think it was 26 yeah so we go to, um yeah february 11th 1926 harry mason wins by disqualification against ernie rice in london england then we go to 1928 the year of the amsterdam olympics uh september 11th 1928 sam stewart wins by ko in the 12th round against ernie rice in london england then May the 2nd, 1929, year of the stock market crash. And again, back to boxing. I think there's a lot of fighters lost money on that with bad advice. Benny Leonard, uh, I think even Freddie Welsh actually. Um, James J. Braddock, some of the names. So, May the 2nd, 1929, Fred Webster. Wins on points over 15 rounds against Sam Stewart in London, England. Then 1930, year of the first Soccer World Cup. Uh, Uruguay winning it in Uruguay. And this is May the 21st, 1930. Al Foreman wins by KO in the first round against Fred Webster in London, England. In October the 20th, 1930, Al Foreman wins by KO in the sixth round against George Rose in Manchester, England. And Al Foreman, uh, sorry, December the 15th, 1930, Al Foreman draws over 15 rounds against Johnny Cuthbert in London, England. Foreman abandoned with the second um, N, yeah, NSC Lonsdale belt. Then we go to 1932, USA Olympics. USA Olympics, which was in Los Angeles. Yes, so, but we go to here. August 11th, 1932, Johnny Cuthbert wins. In the 10th round, referee stops the fight against Jim Hunter in Glasgow, Scotland. And 1934, uh, the year of the World Cup, when Italy win it in... Italy. Yeah. And then they win it again in 38. Yeah, that's right, in France. That's right, yeah, so I'm digressing. So let's go to here. Boxing, uh, January the 18th, 1934. Harry Misler, cracking uh, amateur fighter also. Misler won the ABAs a few times. Harry Misler wins on points over 15 rounds against Johnny Cuthbert. In London, England. Actually, I might be getting modelled up with Harry Mallon. I think I am, actually. Yeah, so forget that. So, August the 4th, 1934. Harry Misler wins on points over 15 rounds against Billy Quinlan in Swansea, uh, Wales. And then, well, we come to the Pittsburgh Windmill. So, October the 29th, 1934. Jack Kidberg wins. Referee stops the fight in the 10th round against Harry Misler in London, England. And he would fight in the States. Uh, yeah, went over and just yeah, fought in the States. And he was managed by Ray Arcel, the guy he would manage also, Roberto Duran, years later. Ray Arcel had a right um, <sighs> grisly story again, as always, with boxing. He was ushered out. When, when basically, he was an older guy, obviously when television was coming in and people, uh, a lot of the gangsters wanted a monopoly on boxing and he was hit over the head with a newspaper with an iron bar in and he was out of the game for 10 years uh, I think he came come back with Duran actually 
in like the 70s. Yeah, I think it was very early 70s, late maybe late 60s. I think it was early. It was early 70s. Yeah, um, but yeah, I'm digressing. So, Jack Kid Burr, cracking fighter for being the beer world champion. So we are going to 1936, year of the Berlin Olympics, when um, Jesse Owens wins the golds. Da, da, da. So comes up with his trail, sticks it in the cinder track. That's his starting block, and he's off on that cinder track, which makes a lot of difference to speed. But uh, April the twenty fourth, nineteen thirty six, Jimmy Walsh wins. Referee stops the fight in the ninth round against Jackie Bird in Liverpool. Now October the nineteenth, nineteen thirty six, Jimmy Walsh wins on points over fifteen rounds against Harry Misler. And then 1938, when Italy win the World Soccer Cup in France. Uh, June 26, 1938, Dave Crowley wins on points over 15 rounds against Jimmy Walsh in L Liverpool. December the 15th, 1938, Eric Boone, stocky little fighter, used to ride miles on the bike to his fights. Um, December the 15th, 1938, Eric Boone wins by KO in the 13th round against Dave Crowley in London, England. Then February 23rd, 1939, Eric Boone wins in the 14th round against Arthur Danahar in London, England. Yeah, cracking old fighter. Um, yeah, a lot of relations to his descendants went to my old club. Uh, da -da -da. So I'm digressing. December the 9th, 1939. Eric Boone, he wins the Lonsdale. So Eric Boone wins by KO in the seventh round against Dave Crowley in London, England. Then August. So we got the time of the Second World War, so there's five years in activity with this title. Other things to think about. But here we are, uh, just before the end. 1945 was the end, but August the 12th, 1944, Ronnie James wins by KO in the 10th round against Eric Boone in Cardiff, Wales. Then October the 16th, 1947, Billy Thompson wins in the third round, referee stops the fight against Stan Hawthorne in Liverpool. And then at May the 18th, 1949, Billy Thompson wins in the fifth round. Referee stops the fight against Harry Hughes in Glasgow. Now, 1950, Uruguay win the World Soccer Cup in Brazil. This is July 11th, 1950. Billy Thompson wins a Lonsdale belt, wins on points over 15 rounds against Tom McGovern in Henley. Now, 1951, what a year this was for Sugar Ray Robinson. It was nearly 30. Um, I mean, probably just past his better days because because the, the activity these fighters had, you know, he, he fought 11 fights in this year. Um, he lost uh, two, he lost to Randolph Turpin from Leamington Spa on July the 10th this year. But he was the 60 day champion Turpin. He took a rematch with bad advice back in the States and got beaten by Robinson who still struggled. He got a cut and he had to come out and finish him. The referee said, look, I might have to stop it but a cut and he came out and finished him with this unbelievable salvo of shots. Um, but in that same year, there was, there was what they called the Saint Valentine, the Saint Valentine's Day Massacre, um, where Robinson fought Jake Lamotta for the sixth time. It was five-one after this, um, but um, yeah, and he stopped him. It was the first guy. To, um, it was the only time he stopped Lamotta. Um, but Lamotta inflicted Robinson's first defeat. I think it was about forty fights. And, and then he was here when he fought uh, Turpin and got his second defeat. It was, I think it was 125 
wins or something like that and he's just his two losses but in this year he's beat the two guys who beat him uh, first Turpin and he's gone and beat for the fifth time the other guy who beat him um, and that was the motor and stopped him so at that point what a record some say I did 85 and 0 record um, but it's a bit of a myth. It's a bit of a myth um, in the amateurs. 85 and 0 record in the amateurs. Um, it's a little bit of a myth. I mean, obviously he lied about his age, Robinson. So you have to give him that straight away for his record in the amateurs. He lied to get any AAUs um, about his age. So he's a bit younger than he said. But he lost to uh, Pasquale Pesca on February 16th, 1938 in a an, uh, New York Golden Gloves tournament at 118 pounds sub novice and he lost also to Charlie Baginski on August 25th 1938 um, in Thompsonville Connecticut I think that was and he lost to Harvey Lassell uh, on September 30th 1938 in Kingston New York in Munis Municipal Auditorium uh, and there, there might have been others. I mean, yeah, it's not slating him at all, but it is a bit of a myth that 85 and 0. And it's even a lot of books with historians, 85 and 0. Um, but he turned pro and saying 130, I think it was 132 fights. He only lost two at this point. Um, a lot of film on his earlier fights isn't seen. So probably his best days with Robinson, even that late, you know, we hadn't seen. Uh, there's other, yeah, other losses to Harry Lassell and Steve Cockle on other occasions, but that's not. You know that there's obviously the others there's more evidence we have to really root it out but um yeah you can get a lot of myth in the history of boxing so we're back digress quite a lot there uh we go back to 1951 so where was i august the 28th 1951 tommy mcgovern good fight yes yeah, so tommy mcgovern Wins by KO against Billy Thompson in London, England. And then 1952, year of the Helsinki Olympics. It's Pavel Nurmi, the runner. Did well there. Uh, so we go July the 25th, 1952. Frank Johnson wins on points over 15 rounds against Tommy McGovern in Manchester, England. Then September 29th. Now that now, a bit of a weird bit of uh, information there. September 29th, uh, 1790, was when Daniel Mendoza fought Humphreys. Uh, I think it's the second time, yeah. Uh, second time that was, but that was 1790. So nothing to do with this, that was bare knuckle. So uh, September 29th, 1953, Joe Lucy wins on points over 15 rounds against Tommy McGovern in London, England. Then April the 26th, 1955, Frank Johnson wins on points over 15 rounds against Joe Lucy in London, England. Now 1956, you were the first of the two Montreal Olympics. Uh, yeah, and Dick McTaggart was in that one, I am sure. And that was Patterson as well, wasn't it? A middleweight, Floyd Patterson. Yeah, so, but here we are here, the pros, April the 13th, 1956. Joe Lucy wins, referee stops the fight in the 8th round against Frank Johnson in Manchester, England. So, we're going to go up to here. Yes. So. So, still at 9.56. From 1956, and it's June the 26th. Joe Luce, um, wins the, when Joe Lucy wins the Lonsdale belt when he wins, roughly stops the fight in the 13th round against Sammy McCarthy in London, England. In April the 9th, 1957, Dave Charlie wins some points over 15 rounds against Joe Lucy in London, England. Then November the 20th, 1961, Dave Charney wins by KO in the first round against David Darkey Hughes in Nottingham. Lovely. So, 
we've got 1963. Uh, that's the same year as Kennedy. The first Kennedy was shot. So again, yeah. Um, I think that was November the 22nd, 1963. But anyway, uh, May the 20th, 1963. Dave Charney wins on points over 15 rounds against Morris Cullen in Manchester, England. Then we've got 1965. Year of the second uh, Ali, um, Muhammad Ali and Liston fight. Um, well, it's the first time he's called Ali, but um, it's not split hairs. He was called Cassius Clay in the first one, but Muhammad Ali, second fight with Art Muhammad Ali and Sonny Liston. And Joe, so Joe Walker as the referee and Nat Fleischer as the timekeeper. But here we are, April the 8th, 1965. Morris Cullen wins on points over 15 rounds against Dave Coventry. That was in Liverpool. Then November the 30th, 1965. Maurice Cullen wins on points over 15 rounds against Vic Andretti in Wolverhampton. Now 1966, obviously England win the World Cup in... Uh, England, Wembley, 4-2 in the final against Germany. Everyone knows that. So June 6th here. The same year, actually. It was within a week of that. It might have been before or after. That Ali beat Brian London in three rounds. And again, amazing combination when he finished him. Um, but, yes, yeah, so... June the 6th, 1966... Morris Cullen wins the Lonsdale belt. Morris Cullen wins in the fifth round. Roughly stops the fight against Terry Edwards in Newcastle. Now, 1967. April 25th, 1967. Morris Cullen wins on points over 15 rounds against Vic Andretti. In Newcastle, now 1968, year of the Mexico Olympics, uh, February 19th, 1968, Ken Buchanan from Scotland wins by KO in 11th round against Morris Cullen in London, England. Uh, yeah, ABA champion also, Ken Buchanan. So we go 1970, the year uh, Brazil won the World Cup in Mexico, the first of their two World Cups. The other one was in 1980. 1986, but yeah, not and Pele was in that team. Gordon Banks made the save of the century, but they still lost England to Brazil. Yeah, so May the 12th, 1970. Kim Buchanan from Scotland wins by KO against Brian Hudson in London, England. And I remember an old timer who's yeah not with us now, he remembered he told me how um, when he had to make weight Ken Buchanan, he would basically get his weight right. Uh, when it's he was bang on the weight and when he had a pee he would put it in a cup so he would know exactly how much he could drink and stay on the weight. Which is a really good old trick that makes so much common sense if you're trying to if you're bang on trying to make the weight but uh yeah apparently he still suffers from Duran's hit the ball of, uh, in the uh, old family allowance to this day he thinks of Duran every time he has a pee supposedly um and he actually Duran won the title and defended it uh they called it 12 times i think it was so May the 12th, 1970, Ken Buchanan wins by KO in the fifth round against Brian Hudson, London, England. Then we have 1972, the year of the Munich Olympics. Um, yeah, and obviously you had T. Filio Stevenson in that. Um, and 76. And even 80, yeah, but he was denied his fourth one in America. Uh, the USA, so in 84, um, I'm digressing, so February 1st, 1972, Wee Riley wins, referee stops the fight in a 10th round against Jim Watt in Nottingham, and May the 3rd, 1972, Jim Watt wins, 
and in 12th round referee stops the fight against Tony Riley in Solly Hall. Then, January 29th, 1973, Ken Buchanan wins some points over 15 rounds against Jim Watt in Glasgow, England. Then, the year of the thriller in Manila, uh, 1975. Yeah, 1975 there. Uh, the last of their fights, it destroyed both of them. It was 30th of Ox. Um, no, sorry, that was, the set. that was the former of what I'm thinking of there. But um, it was 1st of October 1975. Um, yeah, that was the third Thriller Manila fight. But we're here in the lightweights, so the British lightweights, January 27th, 1975. Jim Watt wins. Ruffy stops the fight in the seventh round against Johnny Cheshire in Glasgow, Scotland. February 21st, 1977. Jim Watt wins the Lonsdale bout. Referee stops the fight in the 10th round. He wins. Referee stops the fight in the 10th round against Johnny Clayden in Glasgow, Scotland. <coughs> 1978, the year of the Argentina Soccer World Cup with Argentina win. Uh, but we're here with boxing February 28th, 1978. Charlie Nash wins in the 12th round. Referee stops the fight against Johnny Clayden in London. In Londonary in Ireland, yeah. So, yeah, I remember meeting this guy when I was younger. Um, yeah, so in 1980, and yeah, Ray Patoose, remember meeting him years ago when I was a kid uh, in a boxing gym. But March 27th, 1980, Ray Catoose. Wins. Well, if he stops the fight in the eighth round against Dave McCabe in Glasgow, Scotland. That's a year of the Moscow Olympics, which the USA boycotted. And March, and that was when uh, Sebco and Steve Ovet had their rivalry, both winning each other's events in the track. Again, March 24th, 1980, Ray Catoose wins. Referee stops the fight against Dave McCabe in Glasgow, Scotland in the eighth round. Then, March 23rd, 1981, Ray Catoose wins. Referee stops the fight in the 15th round against Dave McCabe in Glasgow, Scotland. Then, 1982, year of the Spain World Soccer Cup, which Italy win. Um, October the 12th, 1982. George Feeney wins. Referee stops the fight in the 14th round against Ray Catoose in London, England. Then, December the 3rd, 1983. George Feeney wins. Referee stops the fight in the 11th round against Tony Willis in London, England. In 1984, year of the Los Angeles Olympics. That stopped T. Filio Stevenson getting his fourth gold medal, breaking the record. He had three uh, on the trot. And Cuba boycotted, as well as Russia boycotted the Los Angeles Games. Uh, an amazing, obviously, they really cleaned up here. Um, yeah, there's Jerry Page, won medals. Uh, Van der Holof, the ones that didn't get um, golds, there were seven golds, but Virgil Hill won silver, and Van der Holofield got disqualified and won bronze. Um, but what a team, Pernell Whitaker, oh you name it, um, yeah there's some that didn't quite make it, Jerry Page, uh, quite a few, uh, I won't mention them all, so seven and nine medals, so they cleaned up, so February 10th 1984, George Feeney wins on points over 12 rounds against Paul Jank in Dudley, and he won the Lonsdale belt outright and relinquished the title, George Feeney. Now, May the 16th, 1985, Tony Willis wins on points. Over 15, uh, 12 rounds, should I say, against Ian McLeod in Digbeth. Then November the 14th, 1985, Tony Willis wins, Ruffy stops the fight in the fifth round against Paul Chan in Dudley. Then 1986, year of the second Mexico Soccer World Cup when Argentina won it. Hand of God involved in that one. Um, but again, May the 24th, 
1986. Tony Willis wins in the ninth round, Ruffy Sox, the fight against Steve Boyle. I remember seeing these on TV back in the day. Uh, Manchester, England. He won the Lonsdale belt outright. Now, September 24th, 1987, Alex Dixon wins on points over 12 rounds against Tony Willis in Glasgow, Scotland. Now, 1988, uh, year of the Seoul Olympics, where you had Roy Jones in there, got silver somehow in the worst decision I've ever seen, um, losing to the Korean, 3-2 with the five judges, 3-2, absolutely abysmal. Uh, but then he went on to do what he did. And yeah, I mean, they were giving prizes, to the judges, all sorts, the Koreans, but anyway, let's not go there. Um, and also Henry, Henry Akinwande, poor Henry Akinwande had his doll stopped while he was out there. Um, was it just before while he was out there? One of the two, and that was the, the theme in boxing news, no doll in soul for poor Uncle Akinwande. Um, and yeah, because they said he could you know, earn a living of being a pro boxer, which is a bit harsh, I thought, but hey ho. So. Just my opinion. May the 24th, 1986. Tony Willis wins. In the ninth round, Ruffy stops the fight against Steve Boyle in Manchester. He won the Lonsdale belt outright. Then September 24th, 1987. Alex Dixon wins on points over 12 rounds against Tony Willis in Glasgow, Scotland. And I've already done these, but I'm going for them again somehow. So February 24th, 1988. Same year as the Mexico Olympics, like I said earlier. Argentina won, Steve Boyle wins by KO. No, it's not, that was 86, I'm digressing. Seoul Olympics, Sean. Seoul Olympics, 1988. That was, that was 18, nine, uh, 86 I'm talking about just then. I'm sort of losing the plot here. So, 1988, February 24th. Steve Boyle wins by KO in the second round against Alex Dixon in Glasgow, Scotland. And again, yeah, I won't bother going through that. So, British Junior title fight. Junior means just under, basically, and Super will mean just above. Sometimes that's a whole new division, a Super. Sometimes it's not. It depends on the organisation. Um, for instance, yeah, it would either get called a Super Feather or a Junior Lightweight title, the weight underneath this lightweight. Um, but anyway, so £130, 9 stone 4, basically. Um, 19, 1968, year of the Mexico Olympics, George Foreman winning gold there in Tokyo. So, sorry, Tokyo was 64. Um, start again. So, 1968, Mexico Olympics, not Tokyo, was, that was 64. And here we are, February 20th, 1968, Jimmy Anderson wins in the night from Rugby Shops to fight against Jimmy Rivery in London, England. And in October the 8th. 1968, Jimmy Anderson wins on points. Over 15 rounds against Brian Cartwright in London, England. Then February 25th, 1969. A bit of a um, weird trivia there. So, uh, in 1964, on that same day, 25th of February, that's when, the, at the time known as Cassius Clay, uh, for Sonny Liston for the first time uh, and Liston retired not coming out for the 7th but anyway here we are on February 25th 1969 so that would have been uh, exactly 5 years later to the day Jimmy Anderson wins in the 7th round Ruffy stops the fight against Colin Lake in London the division was abolished but comes back as a super featherweight uh, 1986, same year as the Mex uh, Mexico World Soccer Cup, which Argentina win. So, January the 16th, 1986, John Doherty wins on points over Pat Doherty. And I had a friend who fought him twice, had some good fights with him. Uh, Mark West fought him. That's in Preston, uh, when Doherty's fight each other for the Super Feather titles. So, 
April the 17th, 1986, Pat Caldell, uh, cracking old fighter, wins in the sixth round. Referee stops the fight against John Doherty in Bradford. Now, Caldell, cracking fighter, but a couple of times he got caught cold. Um, he fought Najid Daho, and he caught him cold. And, well, I mean, as Amazula Nelson did, um, caught him cold as well. But, you know, that's Amazula Nelson. Um, in seconds, but you know the Najid Daho one, he revenged Pat Caldell. Um, fortunately, Najid Daho died um, in a motorcycle accident. Uh, but yeah, I enjoyed watching him, Najid Daho, really good fighter. But that, that's coming straight to this fight next. Uh, I remember seeing this on television, but I really like the way he come up. A bit like Steve Robinson in the way I like that sort of way. You know, it wasn't the perfect record he had, but you know he sort of. Um, you could see him mature in his career. That's what I liked about watching him. So May the 24th, 1986, Najid Daho wins by KO in the first round against Pat Caldell in Manchester, England. So I saw these on TV, I remember these. It was yesterday, so October the 26th, 1987, Pat Caldell wins in the eighth round. Referee stops the fight against Najid Daho in Birmingham. Um, 1988, like I say, year of the Seoul Olympics. South Korea, May the 18th, 1988, Floyd Hovard, good Welsh fighter, wins, roughly stops the fight in the 8th round against Pat Caldell. So I'm going to leave it there, um, and yeah, featherweight's next. That's the end of the lightweight, but I've also added just a brief uh, brief one up to eight, all that to 88 at the moment, so I'll get to the next lot. Um, of the super feather, or you can call it junior, junior lightweight division, same weight division they are, they're, they're not separate, they're just, yeah, cool. Super means above, junior means under. So that's the end of that one, bang.